imagined your sister would have sided with the abyss. Well, keep your chin up. Paimon believes in both of you. And when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Right? She said we needed to reach the end of our journey. Paimon bets she still has lots more to tell us. And we won't find out what this journey is or where it will end unless we keep going. Aw, oh, don't mention it, partner. Travel buddies are supposed to look out for one another. Although, where should we go next? If we want to continue with the journey... Hmm... Oh, you mean the god that took your sister away in the first place? You're right. After all, everything that followed, all this confusion, it all started with her. Yeah. Paimon bet she's the key to understanding this whole mystery. Well, we've ruled out two gods so far, the Animo and Geo Archons. So, next... Hmm... Paimon doesn't think we can simply walk into Inazuma. Zhongli said it was a closed nation. We'll have to find some other way in. <gasps> Why don't we ask someone from Inazuma how to gain entrance? Oh, Paimon spotted someone already! Atsuko, in Leo Harbor! She's from Inazuma! Let's see what she has to say! I mean, good fortune, right? I'm still learning to talk like a local. <laughs> Is there anything I can help you with? We wanted to ask, how do we get into Inazuma? Oh, so that's why you're here. Well, there is a way. Great! We came to the right person! But the chance of success is incredibly small. Huh. Incredibly small? Then how did you get out? Inazuma in the first place. It was in leaving Inazuma that I found out just how dangerous this method truly was. All I had to rely on was a little wooden raft that I'd put together myself. There was a storm raging ahead of me, and my pursuers were close on my tail. After I'd escaped their clutches, I floated on the open ocean for I don't know how many days. My rations and fresh water supplies soon ran out, and I remember getting to the point where I was sure I'd reached the end. Then, I blacked out. But, to my surprise, my journey didn't end there. Or to put it another way, a new beginning found me. Ah, that's right. I escaped by the skin of my teeth. The fact that I'm even alive to tell the tale must be a sign that the gods were watching over me. What a horrible journey! And you set off knowing how dangerous it was? Why? Well, because everything is just too restrictive over there. The atmosphere is so stifling. The Kanjo Commission subjects everyone leaving or entering the nation to a protracted approval process, and... I felt like I didn't belong there. Kanjo Commission? What's that? Along with the other two commissions, they oversee everything in Inazuma. We usually collectively refer to them as the Tri-Commission. I suppose they're equivalent to the eight trades under the Liu Echising. One of the obligations of the Kanjo Commission is to conduct rigorous identity checks on all individuals leaving or entering Inazuma. All non-nationals are processed centrally on Rito upon arrival. Meanwhile, the Tenryo Commission is responsible for implementing the recently promulgated Vision Hunt Decree. They act like the executive arm of the Raiden Shogun's rule. Loyal, 
yet unfeeling. It doesn't feel good to speak ill of my home like this. But after spending so long under that oppressive atmosphere, I begin to lose all hope for the future. What I mean to say is, unless you have an extremely compelling reason to go to Inazuma, you should abandon your plans of trying to get there. <sighs> you should know that the sea around Inazuma is engulfed in a perpetual tempest of wind and rain. Supposing you survive that, you would still need to get past the samurai guards that enforce the Sakoku Decree, the closed nation policy of Inazuma. And even if you did manage to find a way, you'd still have to produce the necessary documentation at the Rito Center for processing outlanders. Otherwise, you'd be kicked out immediately. Seems like they really don't want anyone setting foot in Inazuma, huh? They only set that up as a port to guarantee a supply of goods and information to the island. Most outlanders would be unable to acquire the documentation needed. But if you really are set on going, there is one thing you could try. Uh, the raft idea sounds a little on the dangerous side. Plus, Paimon would definitely get seasick. That's not what I meant. You could ask someone from the Crux Fleet if they have some way of getting you to Inazuma. They're well known in Liyue. Voyaging far and wide has made them a well-traveled group with a wide range of experiences. They may just know how to break through the storm. But it's an armed fleet, right? Why would they agree to a request like this? That part is up to you. If you're able to persuade their captain, Beto, then the hardest part will be out of the way. The Alcor is the flagship of the Crux fleet. I heard that it's currently anchored by Guyunstone Forest on a supply run. This might be your best chance. Then there's no time to lose! Let's go find Captain Beto! What's the hurry? What's the hurry?
Huh. Who have we got here? Wait, I know you. You're that traveler, aren't you? The one who fought against the Fatui and Osile, right? <laughs> Ningguang told me about you. A traveler of great insight and remarkable skill has saved Liyue, she said. She's a hard one to please, so praise from her is high praise indeed. I remember thinking at the time that it'd be good to meet you in person. Judging by the clothes on your back and this floating thing, I guess that time has come. Hey! The name's not Floating Thing, it's Paimon! Paimon? Hmm. What a fascinating being. You two give off not only the essence of wind and earth, but also of... Yes, the stars. Huh? The fragrance of what now? That's the weirdest compliment Paimon's ever heard. Pay it no heed. I mean only to say I am certain that it is by fate, not chance alone, that we should meet. And that gives our encounter meaning. You're not far off, but they go by a different name in Inazuma. This young man is Kaidahara Kazuha. A temporary addition to my crew for reasons I won't bore you with. Occasionally, he opens his mouth and flowers come out instead of words. With this fine ship and the soft sea breeze, would it not be romantically irresponsible of me not to acknowledge it with a line or two of poetry? <laughs> well, I can't argue with that. Okay, then. Once the clash is underway, I'll give you a chance to perform. Only if the mood takes me, of course. Poetry for poetry's sake tends to lack meaning. Hey, you don't want to pass this opportunity up too easily. Especially seeing as our great hero here might be in attendance. Oh, wait a minute, what's the clash? Uh, also, just to clarify, by great hero, do you mean... Huh? I thought you might be here to sign up. You're telling me you've never even heard of it? The Crux Clash is a martial arts tournament that I hold. There'll be a whole bunch of folks taking part to showcase their talents. There are two important rules. One, competitors must be renowned fighters. We want those with real martial arts ability, not just people taking part for the fun of it. So, you've got nothing to worry about there? I don't think there's anyone out there who hasn't heard of you. Two, you can't take part if you've got a vision. Otherwise, things get a little... one-sided. <laughs> you must be feeling confident, but you might want to watch out. There are a few crouching tigers and hidden dragons lurking around in Liyue. And with Liyue's savior taking part in the tournament, now that's gonna turn a few heads. I think we can expect a healthy turnout this time. But we didn't come here to take part in a martial arts tournament. Well, before you dismiss the idea completely, you might be interested to hear that the prize this time round is particularly sought after. Get this. It's a masterless vision. Supplied by myself, as a matter of fact. If the tournament champion can reawaken that vision, it belongs to them. Is there really such thing as a masterless vision? When a vision bearer dies, the light in their vision will fade away. But the shell that housed that light remains. As for whether this shell has any practical application, well, this remains to be seen. But my intuition tells me that while it remains in the world, it may just be possible for someone else to inherit it. Yep, and the way I see it, a vision is a badge of recognition from the gods. So if anyone's able to rekindle it, it's gotta be an individual of exceptional strength and talent. Organizing the clash is my way of uncovering hidden talents. And hopefully this time, getting a vision to glow again. So, if you don't have a vision, this is the perfect opportunity to get your hands on one of your very own. Yeah, we're interested in getting to Inazuma, not fighting in 
some tournament. Inazuma? You... want to go there? <laughs> well, why didn't you say so? Inazuma, no sweat. In that case, if you win the tournament, I'll give you a choice. Masterless vision, or a ticket to Inazuma aboard the Alcor. Up to you. You just want him to take part in your tournament! <laughs> What's wrong with that? The more talent we have, the better the tournament will be. I couldn't let a competitor like you fall through the net. What are we gonna do? <sighs> Looks like we pretty much have to do this tournament if we want to get to Inazuma, huh? <laughs> Great. Then let's get you signed up. Head to the tournament arena in Guyun Stone Forest. Kazuha and I will be over soon. It seems like it will only be a matter of time before the answer is revealed. What's the hurry? up let's see who the other competitors are beto said that they had to be renowned fighters hmm. hi there are you here for the crux clash too that's right nothing beats real life combat for honing your skills that's what our master taught us but this tournament is more than just a chance to put training into practice it's also a chance for us to obtain the masterless vision Exactly. With a vision, we'd quickly become our master's top students. This master of yours must be pretty incredible, huh? Are they someone famous? Famous? He's the founder of the Ling Shan clan, and his skills are unparalleled. Liang and I are both proud disciples of his. You probably wouldn't have heard of it. It was founded quite recently. The clan is nowhere near as famous as the master himself anyway. He's got to be a Grand Master or something. He's created many different styles of Kung Fu, and countless other clans have borrowed extensively from him. To the Ling Shan clan, he teaches a special technique known as Force Dispersal. Force Dispersal? It's a type of breathing exercise where you can train yourself to harness the energy around you and neutralize attacks without moving an inch. For example, our master can use it to alter the path of an attacking fist, or change the direction of an incoming stone, all without breaking a sweat. 
One time, he sent a challenger flying into the air without lifting a finger. It sure is, but it's extremely difficult to cultivate this ability. We've been training for ages and we're still getting to grips with the very basics. There's no way we could use it proficiently yet. <sighs> we're clearly not that naturally gifted, or we would have at least gotten the gist by now. If we don't start making progress soon, we'll probably run out of money to pay the tuition fees and still have nothing to show for all our training. There's a tuition fee? Of course! This is a Grand Master we're talking about here. He doesn't have time to waste. If you want face-to-face -face training, you've got to show you're sincere about it. <sighs> but here we are, having trained under him directly all this time without even a hint of improvement. Master is getting increasingly impatient with us. Recently, though, we heard that a Vision Bearer joined the Guhua clan and made pretty much instant progress in their training. So, if we can get our hands on a Vision too, maybe we can finally make our Master proud. Well, we have to try something new. Otherwise, we're stuck in the same situation. Exactly. It can't hurt to try. And if it turns out it does work, the Ling Shan clan will go down in history. Folks will come from far and wide. Heck, we could even become the dominant martial arts clan in all of Liyue. See you in the arena. Are you here to compete in the Crux Clash? You bet I am. Have you put your names down yet? Well, I'd have a look at the entrance criteria if I were you. Then it'll allow just anyone to take part. The Clash is a comprehensive test of fighting ability. Anyone who turns up for show over skill is gonna get their butt handed to them. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that, right? Uh, yeah, we heard a rule about that. So... Wondering, are you a renowned fighter? <laughs> Me? Only a former runner up in the Tsuhu Rock Freestyle Combat Summit. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Also, that doesn't sound like the most official tournament out there. Hmm. What? You. Nonsense! Have you been living under a rock? It's been going on for years. There were plenty of competitors when I took part. Not to mention, I've helped the Millilith catch treasure hoarders before. There were two of them trying to escape. I soon sorted them out. They tried to sneak past me under the cover of darkness. <laughs> they didn't know what hit them. I planted a left hook on the skinnier one's face and sent him flying. Then, the big guy pulled out a knife. I stood my ground, of course. A roundhouse kick sent the blade hurtling into a beam above us. <laughs> I told you. Unarmed, outnumbered two to one, but I still got the upper hand. I'm not saying I came out completely unscathed, of course, but the fact remains that I did manage to subdue the both of them, and hand them over to the Millilith. I received quite the commendation. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. But for us, even four or five treasure hoarders at a time is all in a day's work. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna keep looking around. I'll see you in the arena, <laughs> but I don't plan on losing to a pair of children anytime soon. Hey, youngster. Are you here for the Crux Clash, too? If so, seems I've found myself another new adversary. So you're also here for the tournament? You better believe it. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think I could walk away as a champion. For me, obtaining a vision is the final and most important piece in the puzzle that is my life. No, no, no. It's not about what I want to do. This is about who I want to be. I am looking to become a perfect person. I know how that sounds, but let me explain. I've lived a successful life so far without any setbacks. I've passed every exam I've ever taken, enjoyed numerous successful business ventures, and seem to get on with just about everyone socially. In most people's eyes, I am already the very embodiment of the perfect person. Though, of course, <laughs> I'd never let the praise get to my head. I know I haven't reached perfection yet, because there's one thing I'm still missing. A vision. You have so much self-confidence. That's not important. I have a contact in the Crux fleet who was happy to vouch for me, 
So they very kindly made special arrangements on my behalf. I've also brought along a bit of an entourage for moral support. It's such a blessing, really, to have so many good friends in my neighborhood. Of course, I also put in a few good days' practice, concentrating mostly on rare and esoteric stats of Kung Fu. As a high achiever by nature, I'm confident I've done enough to guarantee my victory in this tournament. Ha! You don't mince your words, do you? Ah, the arena will be the judge. Now then, if you don't mind, I need to finish my pre-competition routine. It's not too long now before you'll get to see me in action. So, to recap, we're up against an inflated ego, some gullible guys paying way too much for their kung fu classes, and another guy who's just... really average. Chinks a village arm wrestling champion, huh? <sighs> Alright, you're signed up. Next, please. What's your name? Wait, uh, aren't you? Oh, did I hear that right? Is it really them? Uh, huh? Aren't they a vision bearer, though? Why are they trying to enter the clash? Uh, I, I have to ask. Aren't you the traveler that helped Liyue fight off that ancient god? Oh, it's really him! The one that spoke with Lady Kuching at the Rite of Parting! Oh, oh, I wonder if I can get his autograph later. I trust you are aware that, uh, only those without visions can enter the tournament? Really? But, but from what I've heard, the things you're capable of in combat are nothing short of extraordinary. You walk into the most dangerous situations imaginable, face off against all sorts of monsters, uh, even the Fatui, and always come out on top. Yep, he still doesn't have a vision, though. See for yourself. Uh, my apologies. I didn't mean to be rude. I'm sure a great hero like yourself would have no reason to lie. Now, could I ask you to provide a few claims to fame? Uh, it's just a formality for you, of course, but I have to make a record of competitors' achievements as part of the sign-up process. So far, I've got... Defeated the Ancient God Osile, so that's one. Do you have any others? Yeah, and also a dragon, too! Put down Battle with Storm Terror. Whoa! Might as well declare him the champion already. I wonder if it's too late to withdraw. Okay, um, that's plenty. Actually, this is the most dazzling track record I've ever seen. By a long shot. Right, your registration is complete. Now, a brief word about the prize. A great hero such as yourself can surely only be here for one thing to win the tournament and claim the grand prize, namely, a vision. Oh, we're not here for that. We're here because Captain Beto promised to take us to Inazuma if we win the tournament. There's another prize, too? Oh, first I've heard of it. Beto must have upped the stakes this time to attract top talent. But why would anyone want to go somewhere as dangerous as Inazuma? I see. So... I take it you discussed your terms with Beto in advance, then. Well, nobody expected you to sign up to a tournament like this. I, I can hardly believe it myself, to be honest. Anyway, the qualifying rounds are about to begin. I'll leave you to your preparation. Hey, so Paimon's thinking about that whole no vision bearers rule in this tournament. Even though you don't have a vision, most people in Tevat think that you can't manipulate the elements without one. So Paimon thinks you probably shouldn't use your elemental abilities during the tournament. You know, just to avoid any misunderstandings. In any case, looking at the competition, it should still be pretty easy for you to win, even without using any elements, right? Alright, it's showtime! You got this! You seem like you're raring to go. Are you ready to compete? Good, then please follow me into the arena. Hmm. Seems like you've got a pretty good chance of winning this game. Our next competitor is seen by many as the favorite to win this tournament. His first bout begins now! Come on, let's go sign up! What a strange guy. Why was he so confident to begin with? Well, now that we've won, let's go and see Beto. She'll probably have something to say to us.
<laughs> I knew I wouldn't regret introducing you as the favorite. So, what do you think, Kazuha? He totally dominated that guy and did it with style, too. Impressive. But I also observed our favorite exercise some restraint, as if to protect the opponent from serious harm. Well, I've fought my fair share of battles, both big and small. And I say, after the show he put on just now, he's more than convinced me of his ability. So come on, we all know you've got a wide vocabulary in there. Can't you spare a word or two to congratulate our up-and-coming champion? All right. Let me think how to aptly phrase these words of praise. You fought well. Ugh, all right then. I was thinking your inner poet might want to join in the fun, but... I guess I shouldn't put you on the spot like that. You know, a lot of competitors came to me saying how surprised they were that Liyue's hero was entering the tournament. And since you signed up, we've had many others do the same, with more than a few top-tier fighters among them. I'm sure lots of them are here to find out how they stack up against you. <laughs> well, since everyone sees you as the one to beat, I figure I should start treating you that way too. For one thing, we don't want you wasting all your energy in the early rounds fighting people who are well below your level. Not to mention, you must be itching to fight someone in your league too, right? So, I'm putting you straight through to the semifinals. Huh? But we only just started the qualifiers! Seems like a crazy system if we just skip straight to the semifinals! This is how Captain Beto works. You won't persuade her otherwise. Besides, at your level, you would have made it to the semifinals anyway. Huh. To be fair, Paimon was thinking that too. All right, I'm gonna watch some more of the tournament. If there's any potential contenders for you out there, I want to know who they are and what they're about. We're finally here, folks! The real show is about to begin! <laughs> the captain seems to have high hopes for this tournament. I have not seen her so excited in quite some time. Your opponent has fought many rounds to get to the semifinals. This makes him a seasoned warrior. You may well be stronger than him, but this should not give you cause to lower your guard. Very well. Show me that you are ready to push through the storm that lies ahead. All right, that's enough chit-chat for now. The audience is waiting. Go find the crew member that signed you up. She'll take you into the arena. Your opponent in the semifinals is new to the Crux Clash, but he has quickly become the dark horse of the tournament. I do not doubt your abilities, but I would suggest that you make sure you are fully prepared before you begin. Relax! My guy's at the top of his game! He ain't gonna lose. Okay, follow me. At last, the moment we've all been waiting for. The semifinals have begun! Who's it gonna be this time? The hero or the dark horse? I don't care about the prize. You're a strong opponent. That's what I'm here for. I'm sweating all over. It's a good feeling. Congratulations. I was beaten by the best. I need to train harder. Right! For a moment there, Paimon was a little worried. If you had a vision, you'd definitely be one of the strongest around. I wanted a vision once, when I was a kid. People said that if you're strong enough, you'll have your chance to get one. But mine never came. I lost interest eventually. You can't depend on a vision like you can your own body. I've fought and won against vision bearers before. The power they have was given to them by the gods. I don't envy it. Huh? You mean you didn't sign up to try and get your hands on that masterless vision? No, I didn't. I only wanted to pit myself against other fighters and see who was the strongest. Only in defeat can you understand your weaknesses and learn from them. 
So I'm pleased with today's outcome. I don't often have the pleasure of experiencing defeat. Wow! Now that's true strength talking! If you have the chance in the future, please come and spar with me again. I will be stronger next time. Uh, by the way, do you know who else made it into the finals? Is it gonna be someone even tougher than you? Whether they'll be as tough as me, I don't know. But what I have heard is that they're extremely quick. So don't get too cocky. There he goes. Maybe we should ask around, see what we can find out about our opponent in the final round. Paimon thinks we might need to... Ah, it's you! <laughs> I watched your match. What a stunning performance. I myself was eliminated in the third round. <sighs> Shame. If only I could have advanced one more round. Aw, uh, maybe next time, huh? Uh, by the way, do you happen to know who else advanced to the final round? Why, yes. He's the same one who defeated me. He is a formidable opponent, quick on his feet and swift to take advantage of his opponent's missteps. I faltered for but a brief moment, but before I knew it, he had me on the floor. Given my stature, I have no fear of squaring off with physically strong opponents, but faced with a nimble, agile opponent such as him, I found myself completely out of my league. Still, I'm sure he'll be no match for you. <laughs> He tried to use force dispersal to deflect a punch, but instead he took it straight to the nose. There was blood all over the place. His opponent was pretty freaked out by it. He kept asking him, why didn't you dodge? But he was pretty much out cold by that point and couldn't reply. Why don't you dodge, they ask. Because to not dodge is the very essence of Ling Shun Clan Kung Fu. It's just that he hadn't quite mastered it yet. Don't even get me started. I spent all my energy helping him get from here to the boat to take him back to the harbor. But by the time I got back, my scheduled match time had already passed and I had to forfeit. I don't dare tell my master about this, otherwise I'd never hear the end of it. Sorry, I shouldn't be complaining in front of you like this. I'm afraid I'm still a bit out of sorts at the moment, so I probably won't be able to help you with whatever you were here to ask me about. Oh, alright then. Hope your buddy makes a swift recovery. Hang in there. Thanks, I'll do my best. Yet. Maybe we can go to You gave an outstanding performance. Truly commendable. I could sense that you're not familiar with bouts of this kind. And it could have cost you the match. But you were quick to adapt and managed to claim victory over your opponent. That is a most invaluable skill. In fact, I discerned this not from what I saw, but what I heard. The ground beneath your feet, and the pattern of your breathing. But it is nothing remarkable, for I discerned nothing more than Captain Beto did. <laughs> He's right. But in my case, I was purely relying on previous experience. I guess not using your elemental powers must be quite new for you, huh? We wanted to ask about who our opponent will be in the final round. Do you think they'll be stronger than the one we faced in the semifinals? Not exactly. Contenders that reach the finals aren't necessarily stronger. They tend to have something unique about their style. As for the guy you'll be facing, his skill lies in his speed, and he has superior form. It's also obvious that he's seen his fair share of battles. What's the matter? Worried that you've bitten off more than you can chew this time? If that is the case, then I have a proposal for you. Let's go somewhere a little quieter, shall we? I haven't properly introduced myself yet. In the land of Inazuma, I was a wandering samurai. Uh, yeah, we could tell that from your getup. But at the same time, when you talk, you don't really sound like someone who's used to waving a sword around. It is true that I am versed both in literary and martial traditions. But on the straggling path of a wandering samurai, is there harm in acquiring a surplus skill? I do not mean to flaunt my martial prowess, but I myself have witnessed reputable fighters hailing from across the lands. 
I do possess some knowledge regarding your opponent's particular skill set. Given your talents, a few hints from me will be all that's necessary to bring your opponent down. Hang on. Don't you think you're bending the rules a bit there? Gathering intelligence is an essential part of any duel. You must know your enemy. Besides, our favorite here has fought many battles on their journey from Mondstadt. Such impressive feats require more than just bravery alone. You betcha! Uh, wait a second. We never told you that we've been to Mondstadt. <laughs> Does one not leave a trail when traveling through the wild? In return, nature also leaves its traces upon you. However, there is only so much that can be discerned from these traces. I sense that many things about you elude me still. These are the things I am curious to know about. Come with me. Some post-match entertainment is in order. Now that we're alone, let me cut to the heart of the matter. You are skilled in manipulating the elements, and not just a single element, but multiple. Is that correct? Paimon knew that you were hinting at something from the moment we met! You've known all along! That's right. If the other contenders were to catch wind of your elemental abilities, let's just say it would cause some unwanted misunderstandings. If I'm not mistaken, you share these considerations, given your reluctance to use elemental skills even in the heat of a match. <laughs> when I talk about that which I see or hear in you, this is not poetic symbolism at play. I mean these things in the truest sense possible. Since a young age, I have been attuned to the tidings of nature. I hear the breath of the wind, and the whispers of the leaves. It is things of this nature that I also hear from within you. Nothing more. As crazy as all that sounds, somehow Paimon still believes you. My humble abilities are negligible compared to your incredible feats. To think a human could wield the elements without a vision, and not to mention your incredibly complex scent, like that of some mysterious being. Could you perchance enlighten me as to how you managed to obtain your combined elemental abilities? Hmm. Extraordinary. So then, might I be so bold as to inquire how exactly it is that you learned to channel elemental energy and even wield it in combat? Ah, it's nothing really. Paimon just told him whatever came to mind. It's been a long journey, and many things have happened along the way. Somehow, he just naturally learned to use the elements to it all. Honestly, even Paimon doesn't understand how it all works. Perhaps such unfathomable things are the essence of the gods and the visions they grant. However, I still wish to have the honor of seeing how you wield the elements. Perhaps it may yet reveal something to me. Of course, I too shall share with you all that I've learned. That will make it a fair exchange. Now then, let's test your skills, shall we? Oh, so sorry. Yeah. 
try not to enjoy them. Freeze! What's the... Don't push your luck. Dodge this. Don't get frostbite. Cool it. Dodge this. Ah! Hmm. Your skills in battle are truly beyond reproach. Even with your opponent's speed, he shouldn't be able to overwhelm you. Your opponent is skilled at controlling his breathing and maintaining balance, which enables him to execute moves that many would find impossible. He relies entirely on the element of surprise to defeat his opponents. In other words, as long as you remain mindful of his ability to detect weak points, then his attack should pose no threat to you. Please, save your thanks. If anything, I should be thanking you for the opportunity to witness your command of the elements that defies all known principles. The world is a truly mysterious place, it seems, and one will always encounter that which is still unknown. You seem kind of obsessed with visions, but don't you already have your own? Why are you so intent on exploring the connection between visions and the elements? I desire to know what meaning visions have to the gods, and what influences the gods' decision to grant humans these visions. My apologies. You must be completely in the dark regarding such matters. For allowing me the honor of witnessing your mystical ways, I am willing to answer any questions you may have regarding Inazuma. So that's what you're curious about? Then allow me to tell you more. As you well know, a vision hunt decree is currently underway in Inazuma. Visions are a gift bestowed by the divine. People that have accepted this gift are now having their visions confiscated inexplicably, sometimes in circumstances that leave their original recipients dead. In the outset, supposing each of the seven archons had their criteria for granting visions to living beings, then does the current Electro Archon now doubt these criteria, or even the act in and of itself? Not to mention, with no new Electro Visions having been granted for such a long time, it would seem that we can infer something of the Raiden Shogun's feelings on the matter. She sounds less like an Archon and more like a tyrant. As far as I know, she is an Archon that pursues eternity. She will relentlessly carry out her will with no regard to what others may think or feel. Liyue's contracts are meant to benefit all who reside within Liyue. But what does Inazuma's pursuit of eternity bring to its people? It goes without saying that the people locked within Inazuma do not fare well these days. Sounds a lot like something the god you encountered in the beginning would do. Oh? Have you encountered the Electro Archon before? With time, we will change, but the Shogun will remain the same. If you wish to find her, she will forever be there. There will come a day when I too shall wish to understand the answers to eternity from her. Ah, the time for your match is approaching. Oh, right! We got so distracted talking about Inazuma that Paimon forgot all about the tournament! If you have no other matters to attend to, then we can return together. Very well. Let's go. I wish to see who will obtain the vision. <sighs> Why isn't he here yet? Never mind. We can start by making your entrance first. Everyone, listen up! Your attention, please! We've reached the climax of the Crux Clash! This is the final match! We've seen many exciting battles today, and now, at long last, the two finalists have emerged. Now, I'd like to introduce our first combatant. Though few have seen him, his reputation knows no bounds. He strikes fear into the heart of Osile, and the mere mention of his name causes even the Fatui Harbingers to turn pale in the face. Introducing Liu as Traveling Hero! Wow! 
<sighs> I've been waiting for this moment. I'm sure everyone witnessed his thrilling match in the semifinals. But today's final round will surely take things up a notch. As for our other combatant, uh, he still hasn't arrived. Oh, come on, what could be taking him so long? You can't just forfeit for not showing up like in previous rounds. <laughs> this is the finals. Apologies, everyone just sit tight. We've got no other choice. If he doesn't show up, we'll just have to postpone the match. Wait a moment. Something doesn't seem right about this. Captain Beto, perhaps we should check on the prize. Traveler, come with us. Let me see. It's gone, all right. The vision is missing. Huh? Did somebody steal it? Who would dare do such a thing in broad daylight? We don't know when it was taken, exactly. Huh. <laughs> I never thought that someone here would have the guts to cross Captain Beto. No need to worry. Even the craftiest sleight of hand does not escape nature's watchful gaze. Hmm... The culprit has only acted recently. They will not have gotten far. The vision was the prize that I had offered, and it was my responsibility to look after it. I will be certain to get it back. Well, if you insist. I'll leave the matter to you then. I'll stay here and try to offer some explanation to all the spectators that came to see the match. If you would, please come with me. Um, but we're on an island. Where could he have possibly run to? Come with me. I can sense the winds are coming. Huh? A wind current? The winds have come at an opportune moment. Let's seize this chance. Ride the winds upward. From there we can continue our search for clues. It was stolen. Well, then why didn't you stop him? You'll see shortly. You can't run from dead. The winds are guiding us forward. The culprit is on the opposite shore now. You can hear that too? What does it sound like? Hmm. Hubris. This way. Follow me. There may be an ambush waiting for us up ahead, but I trust that you are well prepared for such a scenario. Treasure hoarders, just as I expected. In which case, please stand back. Cool it. You caught up with me? How is that possible? I had even prepared a boat to ensure a quick getaway, and still you caught up to me! No boat could ever match the speed of the wind. The wind? What are you talking about? Oh, I get it. Your vision. Drat! If I only had a vision! Or, if I could activate this one, then you'd never be able to catch me! 
This has nothing to do with visions. You may be skilled at vanishing from a crowd, but it seems you know precious little about how to conceal yourself from nature's gaze. Additionally, your chosen escape route was flawed for reasons that are too numerous to go into, and on top of that, I could hear your boasting and proud laughter in the wind as I was pursuing you. In other words, you failed to meet any of the basic criteria for a grand heist, namely speed, stealth, and style. You... you... But most disappointing of all is the state of the vision in your hand. It appears that the vision doesn't respond to human desire indiscriminately. Fine! Fine! I admit it. I've had my eyes on this vision for quite some time now. I decided to register after hearing that this fighting contest was full of a bunch of lousy fighters. I fought my way to the finals and... Aha! So you were supposed to be our opponent! I'd intended to win the contest through skill alone all along. But then you showed up. After watching the semi-finals, I knew that I didn't stand a chance. But I wasn't about to give up on the vision so easily after coming all this way. Since there was no use in trying to face you in the match, I decided to put my skills to good use while everyone's attention was on you and Beto. I was convinced I prepared thoroughly for my escape, but somehow you still managed to catch up to me. <sighs> Dread. This could... This should have gone differently. <laughs> I know an empty threat when I hear one. Fine. But you'd better mean it. It didn't activate once I took it anyway. It's nothing but a useless shell to me. You know, according to the laws of the sea, the penalty for stealing is breaking the culprit's arms. Huh? You're not serious, are you? Not to mention that the item you stole was a prize. You didn't show up for the final match, and you damaged the reputation of the captain of the Crux fleet. It seems that it would be only fair to brand the word thief on your forehead with a hot iron. Whoa, whoa! We don't need to go that far, do we? <sighs> I never would have guessed you could be so cruel. If this is where talking gets me, then forget it! I'll risk a fight! I'll have my revenge, eventually. No, no. Do what you want, but please, don't brand my forehead, please! <sighs> He has persevered to the bitter end, and now death looms near. Yet still the gods do not bestow their favor upon him. Put down the vision and leave. I've changed my mind. No further punishment for you. Uh huh? What's wrong? Are you asking for more punishment? It's up to you. Such willingness is commendable, and fits the way of the samurai. No, no, no need for that. Thank you for releasing me. You truly are generous. Huh? Paimon doesn't get it! Were you just trying to scare him? I take no pleasure in frightening others. I was just testing all possibilities while the vision remained in his hands. When people are forced into a corner, that is when their greatest strength will appear. I thought it may be an opportunity for him to awaken the vision. But unfortunately, nothing happened. Yes. I wanted to know whether it were possible for an extinguished vision to be reawakened. From the moment he stole the vision, I decided to use him for this experiment. I've tried many other methods in the past, though few tales tell of a masterless vision reawakening. After seeing you command multiple elements, I figured that nothing is impossible. Come. Why don't you give it a try? Let's see if you can give me the answer I'm hoping for. Huh. The vision didn't seem to respond at all. I see. So you are also unable to rekindle the vision. No matter. This was expected. I suppose this vision is still mine to take for now. Yeah, what's the story behind this vision anyway? 
The story begins with an old friend. He was once a good friend of mine. One day he asked me about a sword art of which he had heard, the Musono Hitotachi. I told him it can only be witnessed when divine punishment is administered. It is the pinnacle of the Raiden Shogun's skill, a symbol of ultimate power. But he replied, there must be one who can withstand it. There will always be those who dare to brave the lightning's glow. Then, the vision hunt decree arrived. People's aspirations were stripped away as the Raiden Shogun began to construct her ideal of eternity. While I was fleeing from place to place, I heard that my friend had challenged the vision hunters to a duel before the throne. A solemn yet brutal challenge. The defeated faced divine punishment while the victors gain a second chance. Perhaps he thought he of all people should make a stand. Coming face to face with the Musono Hitotachi was all that he truly desired after all. When I arrived at Tenchukaku, the duel was over. I heard his sentence of divine punishment, his severed blade hitting the ground. Perhaps that was the glory he had yearned to witness. In his last moments, what expression was on his face? Before I knew it, I had stepped forward and snatched the dying vision and was running from the scene. All I knew was that I mustn't let his hope, which burned so brightly, become buried among the ice-cold statue of a god. Perhaps one day, I may come to find that all I have done is meaningless. But as a wandering samurai, I find meaning in traveling and the sprawling beauty of nature that lies along the way, while still retaining the warrior way in my heart. Kazuha! <laughs> it's just another way of saying I do as I please. All right then, it's time we returned. Allow me to gather the wind for us once more. Already? Maybe she went back to her ship. If you're looking for the captain, she was summoned by Lady Ningguang. It seems that the crux clash got out of hand this time and has attracted her attention. Captain Beto was muttering something about Ningguang being a stick in the mud as she headed off to Liyue Harbor. <laughs> it's not unusual for those two to be at odds with one another. But still, Captain Beto was disappointed she didn't get to witness the crowning of the new champion. She had been looking forward to it for quite some time. The one who stole the vision was originally to be this hero's opponent in the final round. He knew he stood no chance of winning the match, thus the wicked idea of stealing the prize took hold in his mind. In which case, the Crux Clash comes to a clear-cut conclusion. Huh? So that's what happened? If that's the case, then the rules stipulate that he is disqualified, and our hero here is the champion. Hyman thought we'd win and all, but not like this. It doesn't matter. As the saying goes, honor given is honor deserved. Now, let me go prepare the champion's medal to award you. Yes, I believe so. Though Captain Beto is no longer present here, I'll be sure she receives word of it. She is a woman of her word. But the voyage to Inazuma is a treacherous one. You will be plagued by a perpetual tempest the entire trip. In fact, the relentless rain and wind are also an embodiment of the Raiden Shogun's will to close the nation. Hold on a second. You're saying she can change the weather just with the power of her mind? Let us not forget that this is one of the Seven Archons. If Liyue's Morax could form Guyun's Stone Forest by casting down his stone spears, then it should come as no great surprise that the Raiden Shogun is capable of summoning an eternal tempest. Suffice it to say that if you wish to journey to Inazuma, the Alcor will need some time. You will be notified once all the preparations have been made. In the meantime, I intend to embark on a journey of my own. 
I will travel all across the vast lands of Liyue in the hope of finding a way to reawaken the vision. Paimon believes you'll find a way for sure. Thank you. May both our journeys prove meaningful. One final word of warning. The part of your journey that lies after the storm may well prove to be the most arduous. Yeah.